They cheated twice. <laughs> that motor doesn't even have an oil pan, and they took me for $100. It was supposed to be complete with an oil pan. Oil pan was sitting outside. There's the right tool for the job, and this is not it. Nobody's cheating. Hey! Just sneaking shit in here? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What are you? It's a nitrous kit. Nitrous? Okay. What's his name had got? Yeah, what's his name? Yeah, what's his name got that? Welcome back to Building Battle. Team Brad, Team John, pretty much neck and neck except for Brad is almost out of money. John still has a little bit of money, but both of their motors are in the car. They're ready to start putting in the final touches. We're about halfway through the season, so things are getting pretty interesting, but both of these cars are looking really good. So let's check in on the teams. Team John, John, Team, Team John, are they hiding? Where? Team John, hello, hello. Okay, well, they must still be sleeping. Welcome back guys, had a great weekend. We're all rested, ready to go. As you guys remember, we had the motor in. We gotta finalize some bolts, get the trans mount done. Jose's gonna get the cage done. We're getting our wheels and tires today, so we're gonna finally center the rear end, weld that in. I'm going to measure for the drive line and send our drive shaft out to get redone. So maybe by tomorrow we have a complete drive line and a running, or actually I say a rolling chassis. So by Wednesday, maybe fire up. There's no engineering in this. This is what happened. The shit don't fit, so we're gonna weld it in, okay? That's all there is. Right now, the motor mounts are just a little bit off, and instead of trying to re-drill the holes down here, we're gonna weld this, weld this, and then I already had planned on chaining these motors down because these rubber motor mounts don't like a big hit when you like let go of the trans brake. It likes to be solid mounted. We're gonna put a piece of chain from here to the frame so that this is just to hold steady. When the motor actually twists, it'll pull on this chain. So it won't actually pull on the mounts themselves. <laughs> Perfect. Where you guys been? I'm gonna collect you. Where you, where been? you been? I was here. Way. You guys weren't when? here. When? I was here at nine. We're here at eight. Prove it. We got here at five in the morning. Five That's in the hour. morning? Yeah. That's for my guy. He hit you up. Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> what you guys do today? Some meals. Oh, spicy boys. Yeah. What size tire are you gonna put on this? This is gonna have by eight. Honestly, I uh, I expected to. Yeah. Well, this is not centered. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Watch, right, watch right. what you say, okay? okay. Uh, my bad. We already ate ice cream when we put the wheels. You already ate ice cream? Yeah, we stopped at like ice cream man inside the road and got ice cream, so we're already here for today. Uh, later on, we might go get the spare transmission and the front wheels. So you're not gonna work on anything, is what you're yeah, saying? No, we're gonna work on the engine. Okay. We have to put the. Pickup tube, seal the oil pan. We have to move the engine forward to mount the transmission at the right position. So you're gonna do all that today? Yeah. And I have taillights coming in. No more ugly. You just spending money on useless things? How's that useless? That doesn't make you faster. Let me see you look cooler. Yeah, style is a part of the criteria, so I respect it. I respect it. All right, Mochi, get to work. Brad Canwell. 
Hey, don't worry, the internet knows everything. I know it's not Kibby Tech, but you know, it'll hold the pipes together. Don't come to my house and ask me to weld. <laughs> You've been faking the funk, huh? You know. Whatever you're about to do looks sketchy. Don't wash it. Now you gotta measure it. Back. Yeah, that's like three hours stay to work though. So we don't have to waste time moving the engine forward. We just make a new hole for the shifter and be done with it. Go up, yeah. Does it sit that high? Yeah. yeah. Sit that high and the shifter's gonna be like right here. So Do they normally sit that high up in there? Nah. Yeah. Not, uh, not on this car. Probably like a little lower. It's about an, uh, an inch lower. That's not gonna help with the drive shaft output angle. Nah, the because the shifter's up here, the transmit the actual transmission is right under the shifter, so I have still space. way down. Yeah. Yeah, that's way down. Oh yeah. That's even flat belly plan. That's where you need it. Yep. I mean it's a little off from there, so we're probably just gonna get Kyle to cut us a little cover. We'll see for <laughs> a price. So if you remember last season on Build and Battle, the loser's vehicle got sold for charity. And uh, we're gonna do that again this time. So Whoever loses this race, we're taking their car, selling it to charity. They have the opportunity to buy it back if they want to, but either way, that money is going to charity. And this time we chose Warriors on Track. We have Tom here, the owner and race driver for Warriors on Track to explain what that is all about. How you guys doing? I'm Tom Woods from Warriors on Track, combat veteran from Iraq and founder of Warriors on Track. We started up in the Southern California location up at the uh, 25 Hours of Thunder Hill Endurance Race north of Sacramento. And we now have a uh, second location, Warriors on Track Pack West uh, in Oregon. And our goal is basically to get combat veterans, uh, especially wounded veterans, into uh, motorsports. Vets that are paraplegic, quadriplegic, or just dealing with PTSD or traumatic brain injuries. So we're kind of covering a whole realm of, of combat injuries. Uh, basically, we're going to try to build a hand control car uh, okay. from this point on and put quadriplegic and paraplegic vets in that hand control car, uh, which is currently sitting at the Thermal Club Raceway that some people might be familiar oh, with. Oh, ther Thermal is yeah. very nice. So, and it goes a little bit beyond that. We don't just want to get vets into motorsports. That's going to be sort of the, um, if you will, the hook, line, and sinker. We want to find out what they need beyond that. Job placement, therapy, we're just getting momentum. And uh, we have a feeling we can blow this up nationwide if we keep working at it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited that we have an opportunity to help you guys with your mission. And I'm excited to be here. I appreciate you guys too. Are you ready to see these things race? Absolutely. I know we are. Yeah. Nice yeah, to meet you, you Tom. You too. <laughs> sponsor you. I'm stealing your secrets. I'm wondering about your secrets. That's a poor man's uh, motor mount right there. <laughs> well, I guess when you're running big daddies like this. Oh yeah, so we got our tires back. We got our new centers. So we had the centers actually moved from where you can see right there to right there. Now they just move without all that poke and stuff like we were worried about before. She got a little bit of poke, but that's not bad. That's not bad compared to what it's it was. It's not centered though, right now. I know. Oh, okay. If you look, let's go over to the other side. Oh, oh yeah. So see, oh, once see, you center it. So once we center it, we center it out. It'll be right. Yeah, when you center that, that's gonna be. It's actually gonna sit flush. So, yeah. What are you up to, Jose? Welding up the gauge. Complete oh. now permanently. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, looking good, man. Looking good. This, this is sexy. How many? This is way better. Than <laughs> how many days until this thing starts? Two days. 
probably two days. One more day of electrical and hoses, and then we can fire up. Uh, so we're looking at the judging criteria for the actual competition because it's not just a race, it's like it's more things to it, so... Here, they're talking build quality is one of the judge points. As we know Brad, he will not try to f***ing even come close to build quality. They can have that one. Obviously, like, we're building a cleaner car, so I know we got bad on that. Budget ingenuity, like, we made the best use out of our money, got the most parts. The better, th uh, better everything. Like yeah, and then we sold like uh, what, like sixteen hundred to something. Well, more, no, it's over two grand. Of yeah, parts, like of parts from the car. Well, we'll probably lose that because we went over budget, so we're gone on that. Style points. Yeah, there's not much style for an S10. Style, you know, you know what's you better than an RX7? First three, we're probably gonna lose, which I'm not really kind. Build concept originality. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of original. Then we have uh, on the challenge day, there's going to be, um, I guess, five different challenges on the least money spent. We did spend more money given that we sold more parts out of the car, so I know that's going to be like a given for them. We will definitely have spent less money than them on the total bill because their shit costs more and they've spent more money on nicer stuff. So ultimately at the end when you add the things up, I already know we're going to win that one. Most horsepower. I guess who decides to blow the shit up on the dyno will win that too because we're really building close to the same power. Most of the power we can win either we go first or last. Yeah, whoever we make goes. More power. Yeah. It's a built engine. Fast quarter mile, we're trying to get the fastest quarter mile, but overall we know we're going to go way faster as trap speed. Fastest quarter mile, not worried about that. They're not going to beat us. Fastest trap speed, that might be interesting. That's a turbo car. That could trap us in speed. So then we're doing the best three out of five quarter miles. Well, they're, they're, their plan is they're hoping we blow up so we can't do the three out of five. And then best out of three, if their shit actually runs three times, I'll be surprised. So we're good on that one too. <laughs> These three out of five runs are going to take into account the speed and the reaction time. So we can have the fastest car, but if his car, if he reacts faster than us at the light, you know, he can win. This is exactly how I wanted it to be break, broken down. You know, it, it makes it like fair for everybody. Well, we're 50-50 right now. It's gonna be a good race. Cause they've got some qualities that they're gonna kill us on and then we've got stuff I'm not too worried about. So we came back from picking up uh, spare transmission for 150 bucks. But we got, I, I, what do you would call these? They're not Johnny's, are they too small? Those are J's. Those are J's? <laughs> but, they're Those? sick Epsilons and they're 4x110, so we have skinnies for the front now. How much were these? 150. So 150, 150, so not too much money spent. And now we got front wheels with tires already on them. Tomorrow the ladder bars get here and all our fittings. We can start putting the car together tomorrow. You got your front end on? Well, we're all done. We're ready to pull it off the stand and go racing. Hell <laughs> nice. Yo, you got. Oh, both pipes on. We're down to the free and clear part, but I got to build a trans mount because it kind of like establishes where the mufflers can come through. Right. So we're down to the easy area. And now we'll put the trans mount in and then we'll put the little mufflers and the drops on. All right, so these guys still got a lot of work to do. Both motors are in the cars. Both of them have transmissions. Both of them almost have rear ends. Both of them have cages and both of them have no money. So it's going to be very interesting moving forward. So. Good luck tomorrow, guys. I'm gonna come in late just cuz. Bye! I have no clue how to do this. We're gonna do the transmission mount. We got these plates over here. So this one we still have to cut out. This is gonna be for the transmission bolt holes. So this piece we're gonna weld over here. This one we're gonna have inside the car and it's gonna be welded onto the floor. So we're gonna find a spot to weld it, drill it through and this plate will be like through bolted with another plate on the bottom to the main one. That way we have a really good transmission mount. This is the original transmission mount from the car. This is the one from the 93 transmission. Also, John's gonna be doing the harness. 
mount the radiator back on and go get some fuel uh, fuel fittings and oil lines. Building a trans mount right now and we're having him finish up the straps, nitrous tank and battery box and then we are going to finish welding the rear end then we're going to put the radiator, the front clip and start work on plumbing. Another wonderful day at Hooney Gang. All you Kebby Tech guys and the real fabricators, you guys can talk shit, I understand. But Brad's not a real fabricator and he busted this out. Now what's cool about this is it reuses the factory ends. So this end here can be unbolted, right here, and that end there can be unbolted. So we reused the factory S10 mounts. We just made a new centerpiece that holds the Turbo 400. So now we're going to finish this exhaust up so that our exhaust is done and then I'll probably jump up on the radiator and start doing the radiator mounts. Stock manual transmission versus stock automatic transmission. The stock automatic transmission is going to make a more precise gear change and more consistently than the manual. But they have manual transmissions that you can shift wide open throttle now. So it's all per se H pattern versus sequential. Sequential is a wide open shift. You're flooring it and you're just click, 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 which is the same as the automatic. The only difference is you're letting a clutch out, you know, to start your car. Versus the automatic, you hold the brake, let go of the brake and floor the gas. So for drag racers, I've always been a fan of manual. Uh, it's a little harder than automatic, but to me it's more manlier to have a manual transmission basically. So you can take the car a little higher, bring the car a little higher out, but the only difference is that you have to be on point with the shifts. If you shift wrong, you can break the transmission or lose the race basically. They're going to be each pattern shifting, which means first, second, over to third, and then back to fourth, which is a whole lot of mistakes. And they have four gears. We have three. Oh, hello! Okay. Brad, Brad. Oh, hello. Hello. Brad, wait your turn. No. Uh, I see you got yourself a radiator now. Yeah, just for now, we, we use the uh, factory one for test fitting. Uh, later on, if we sell some more shit, we're going to get that one or more. Uh, right now, I'm gutting the intake manager. Sorry, cut it to make it hollow so you can flow all air in it. I start to pour it really nicely. Are there usually butterflies here or something? Yeah, right, right through here, the secondary butterflies. These, instead of just putting bucket plates on them, what I'm gonna do is like on this one, and this one back here goes straight into the throttle. I'm just gonna weld this shut, and then tap it for these fittings to run it to like the fuel pressure. Okay, so you're uh, building your own vacuum lines. Yeah, uh, but I already connected also the cruise control. And right at the lights. So I'm gonna do one little hole here. And it hold, I made this bracket to hold it, so the, this one goes to the front of the turbo. That's gonna be the, the, the boost source. Don't yank on it, man. You're, you're gonna I, break it. I don't yank on it. And then the bottom port goes to the bottom of the wastegate. And the top one's the one that, that changes the pressure to the boost control to make it boost more. You sure you have that right? Yeah. I, I have the same one in my car. If you don't, people are gonna make fun of you. No, that's right. They're gonna make fun of me, I don't care. <laughs> what, what are they building? <laughs> Without the ladder bars, we can't finish the cage. We can't do the dry shaft. We can't do nothing without the ladder bars. So that's literally holding you back pretty big. Yeah, I mean, the past two days we've just been bullshitting because we don't have parts, so we're just painting anything we can find. But now that I know where everything's at, the inexplorer piping is literally going to go from here down 
I run the engine up and then into the intake. No intercooler. No intercooler. Party car. Yeah. We stole the tires at John Chase. Oh really? So, yeah. That's so amazing. That's amazing. So like, oh man, look at these tires. So, yeah, so we're gonna get a little more into our budget. What'd you get for them? Uh, I don't know. You gotta negotiate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, to John. <laughs> you can't and you can't sell anything. I couldn't give it away. <laughs> I had to scrap it. Uh, I've got pennies for the metal. Oh my god. So so what do you got going on? We are making the flanges right now so that we can disconnect the mufflers. So we're putting mufflers on the little down parts. Oh uh, yeah. So on on these make, little things? On those little things. So I've got to put the disconnect flanges on it. And then I cut in the frame so that we could French in the radiator because we've got to put some re-support back underneath here for the radiator. We kind of want the radiator to stay inside the car so that we can take the clip on and off and work on the motor. Right. So we don't have any interference mm, right, with that right, right. Easy. to work on. Today we'll probably be able to get this thing back on the ground, get the spindles on, and set the pinion. So, you, the pinion. so you're going hard today. You're, you're, you guys are yeah. going to make... And then you get... Uh, Tomorrow will be like electrical, fuel lines, oil lines, and maybe a fire up. Oh, oh, yeah. the cam. You can hear the cam then. You can hear that big wild motor that I built. He's determined to think that I actually built this motor. I, whatever, I can guarantee you this is a GM sealed, factory sealed motor. All right. If we wad it up, you guys will see all the factory parts all over yeah. the factory. So I put this on my mother's grave. That is a factory sealed okay. GM motor. All right, all That's right. how confident I am of that motor. I mean, everyone knows drag races are cheaters, so. Are you get your drive shaft yet, or is that all? Drive shaft tomorrow, okay. and our alternator back tomorrow. You got a big daddy or something? No, what we did is we had the alternator sent out so that we can only run one wire. Uh, we can also run the excited wire. Right, right, right. It just runs a big power wire. When yeah. it moves, it works. When it doesn't move, it doesn't work. Yeah. That way, it's simple. Simple, wire. simple, yeah. So we just got uh, two boxes of parts for the car. So I'm pretty sure it's fittings. Alright, now the next box. Oof. Height. Oof. <laughs> That's the downpipe right there. And J Ben. That's it. Did he open twice like that when he was a kid? Yeah. Like it's terrible. Look, that was unnecessary. Now there's a huge mess That's for no trash. reason. Host. Host clean it. More than a host. So I ordered these from Vibrant so we can do our exhaust. Um it's actually for the wastegate. You're gonna see this coming out of the hood and this coming out of the hood, probably next to each other. We'll see how fancy I get. You guys just copying shit car? You wish it. Nah, copying my car. I did it first. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you got nice and, and, and even, not be sitting out the hood. Oh, you're gonna keep it clean? You're not going nah. full horns out? I'm not going full shitty. You gonna teardrop it? Yeah. And earlier, uh, I actually ended up relocating the brake line. So I drilled a hole here and ran the line inside the fender because we don't want the line to be close to the heat because then we lose brake pressure. Smart. And this will melt too and use the turbo. Smart. See? Thank you, mate. First time you can. Ah. show you guys what I'm doing. This is secret, secret, secret shit. This was bestowed to me by somebody to not be bestowed. Unlike a, uh, 
uh, regular car where you need all the suspension, so like suspension's all the way up and all the way down. We only require just a little bit in the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these chains up to hold the front suspension down so that it actually doesn't come all the way up. And we're gonna give it what's called an inch and a half of lift. So the car will actually, if you floor it, instead of just going Whoa! like that, it's gonna go up to an inch and a half, and then it actually has to pick the front tires off the ground. You see what I'm saying? So that forces the weight on the rear of the car. So it's gonna go and then take off. So we can't afford the real straps, but we can't afford chains because we are over budget. All right, so a little update for today. We got our spool, uh, our third member last night, along with uh, the ring gear. So we have to put this over there and then the spool. 457 ring gear uh, with the strange spool for our axles. So we have to put it on together. We have to get, well, we're gonna have to get new bearings. Yeah, we gotta get new bearings. So we need uh, bearings for the spool and bearing for the pinion. Uh, then throw back on so we can actually measure the dry shaft length. So the transmission is already mounted where it needs to be. Other than that, I have to go with her to get the wiring supplies because so we're moving the battery from the front of the car to the back. We have to put a, a sealed battery box for safety and also we have to make a little hole somewhere here. First battery right cutoff. Right here, put a battery cutoff in. By rules, at any track you have to have a battery cutoff if you drive a racing vehicle. So, we did something wrong, something wrong. So we were supposed to weld some chains to keep the truck from going up further than we wanted to on launch. And this was Brad's idea. I was the one who welded it. But anyways, team effort. Those are the welds we got there. This was supposed to keep it from going up, <laughs> but it's actually going further than what we wanted to. We were actually supposed to weld it from here to the lower control arm. We welded it from here to here because that's what Brad said. And I went along with it. So, yeah, we gotta cut those out now. Never listen to what Brad said. Rule number one. <laughs> Right there, right there. Perfect. That's where we need to tighten it. Whoa! It's not three times a charm, it's only twice. And this is the second time, so it's done, two and done, okay? It's not one and done around here, it's two and done. First time just for practice. Alright. So we got the diff cleaned up, got all the grease off of it. So now we're gonna take it apart. First we're gonna start by taking the pinion flange. We're gonna take the whole pinion out by taking these five bolts out. This whole unit will pop out. And then we're gonna take out the end caps and pull out the, the ring with the center section. After that, we'll go get uh, bearings. It'll just be bearings and a little paint so we can check the wear pattern and that'll be it. And this is the ring and the posse unit. Everything's already taken apart. Now we're just gonna get uh, new bearings for the new unit. And that should be it. Ring, pinion, front case, and the posse unit. Team Bad Daddy Braddy. We're on final assembly for the rear end. This is the last time we have to take this apart and put this duck together. Everything's degreed, centered, all done. You gotta do the brake line. And that's it. I'm gonna go to Deering and we go. I'm gonna have that brake line made. And that's it. And then we're plumbing the tank, plumbing, uh, wiring the battery, and going to ECU. If you play your cards right, this thing might start up today. 
Oh wait, that was the plan, right? Today was the day. Yeah. Uh, we might be a little, just because the fitting order, we mm. can't make brown sand and go faster. Right, right. <laughs> Story of us race car guys' lives. Hey. Sitting on the porch waiting for brown sand to come. Brown, brown Santa, I believe, is UPS. Yeah, <laughs> for those who that don't, wasn't yeah. the I don't know. I'm just saying, just making it clear for the yeah. people who don't know who Brown Santa is. Brown you know who Brown Santa is? Yeah. All right, I'll just make sure. Perfect. Perfect. Got this whole kit from the store. Pressed it. Teamwork is dream work. So you checked all your paint marks and everything? Yeah, all that stuff's good. It's a, um, everything's like around here where it's supposed to. I mean, it's a little off, but you can see it. But, eh. Like a millimeter, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna take the diff out, put the third member back on, put the axles on, and then the ladder bars. Did and they come in? They have them. They haven't shown up yet. Up Drive Jaff uh, just showed up, minutes. had this custom made, so they basically put a turbo 400 end on this end and a Mustang end on that end. And now we're ready to slide it in. Yeah. Yeah. 10 more. No way. <laughs> I'm shaking. 101. Uh, it fits, it's just like there's this much slip sticking no, out no, still. Yeah, it's it's got a short the bill is the main. Yeah, I mean, I'm Cut that, that end off? Yeah, because you've got a choke tail. Can I just cut it with the chop saw? Yeah. The drive flange that goes into the training is just a little bit long. So. Just gonna cut it to feed uh, on a short tail. There short tail 400. We're gonna now make it a short tail 400. Mike, right? Mike, cut it. So Vargas wants to find out if this motor that he pulled out of this car yeah. runs because apparently it doubles the value if it actually is a running motor. So, John. Hey, old girl. Oh, they connected. Old girl dummy. got compression. <laughs> you dummy. That's compression. That's compression right there. Where's the gas we're putting in it? No, no, I'm testing the wiring first. Oh, let's just get some gas. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to fire gas. I love how you guys are just hanging out with each other instead of actually like being the opposition. So, so if this motor did it, doesn't run, how much money? And if it runs, how much money? 1500 if it doesn't run, that has like a 1500 if it runs. Wash it really nice, pressure wash the shit out of it. Is that Brad's pressure washer? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say Brad, charge him. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yo, we don't have to put the carburetor on. You put oil in or what? Yo, it started right up. <laughs> nah, let's let's get this thing chopping for we a little oil bit. Oil in it though. Oh. <laughs> One more hey, time. We got our car running first. <laughs> <laughs> they cheated twice. <laughs> that motor doesn't even have an oil pan, and they took me for a hundred dollars. It was supposed to be complete with an oil pan. Oil pan was sitting outside. Right. And then they started pan. the motor that's like outside said, of the car and said that they started in transmission. You didn't say oil pan. You said engine. Yeah, you got me more specific. Man, the scumbaggery is real. <laughs> uh, do it again. That's fun.
All right, so we just got the intake semi peripheral. So these are our additional intake ports that we have on the engine now. So compared to the old one, this is the, the original one. It's got all these vacuum uh, EGR ports, vacuum ports we don't need. It only has two injectors on it, where this one has four. One, two, three, four. And it's equal length. And it's equal length compared to this one, which is offset to the back, where this one is equal length straight up. So it moves a little bit forward to keep it away from the, the brake master. So big difference. Stock, aftermarket, stock. So making work of the extra budget. It's about time to put the tools down, so let's see what we got going on. Bad Daddy Braddy today. Hello, Brad. Hello. Got a lot done. Looks like it. I see it's on the ground. It's on the ground. Under its own weight. Grinch, welded, centered. Uh, fuel cell straps are done. Battery straps done. Nitrous bottles installed. Nitrous lines are installed. Nitrous kits installed. New alternator put on. We welded the chains for the limiting straps on the right side. Oh yeah, your harness is up in there. Harness is in. I got to mount the ECU in the dash. And we got to run trans lines and fuel lines to the fuel pump. Well actually from there to the filter to the pump and the pump to the uh, rails. And then we're ready to go and fire up. This. this is one kit, so there's a plate right here. That's a 200 shot. And then we have an old school fogger nozzle like all the kids played with for the 100 shot. You ain't playing, huh? No. One's the win, and one's the, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna win. <laughs> We're finalizing. Tomorrow is literally go through everything we did, recheck bolts, tighten everything, get the electrical done, the fuel stuff done and hopefully get it fired up and download a preliminary tune for it so that we're set and ready for the dyno. Is that one of those self-learning ECUs or you yeah, gotta... it's a self-learning ECU. So you just turn it on and let turn her eat? Turn it on, fire it up, let it eat. All right, you guys wanna show me what you're up to? All right, so today we got a stiff done. So Mike put together the rear end with the strange parts in it, the spool, the gears, all new bearings they put all together. And we also got a ladder kit. Okay. So you finally got the ladder kit. Yep. Give me a quick 30 second. Two bars get connected to the differential with these brackets. These go like this. So this is where the shocks are gonna go mount, mounted to, right here. So whichever way we do it. This is the front bar. It's got a, a hoop, like a, a bend for the uh, drive shaft. This bar right here is for the shocks. This is the top bar. The shocks came with the kit, strange shocks with custom spring rating. So all this stuff is adjustable. If we need to move it or tweak it, or if the car's like pulling to the left, to the right at test day, we can adjust everything so it leaves straight for the competition. This is a wild kit. You guys have- uh, And all for a thousand bucks. You have your work cut out for you. This is easy. Sergio. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hey, and where are you yeah. at, John? While your brother's been doing all this science, what you've uh, been doing? Thanks to Brad and this amazing budget, we were able to get a new radiator. Well, not new, but <laughs> We were able to get a radio use. Yeah. It's a little abused, but these coils are known to work perfectly. Oh, and look, 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 I cleaned it. I cleaned it a little bit. I'm excited to hear this thing start up. Me too. It's gonna be really loud. I haven't been a part of this, but this dude's ah, cheating. <laughs> Straight up. This is my car now. We're doing it my way. Whoa! Don't be nervous, bud. Okay. <laughs> Did you tell your wife about the money you spend on your car? <laughs> okay. Dunn said that's a wrap. Wait, am I the wife? Or are you the wife? I'll the be wife? the wife. Alright. <laughs> 